Hi, I'm Jason Larson. And I'm Mike Thompson. And we're from Bradwell International. And today, we're gonna to take you through a step-by-step -step process of how a servo motor works and how to repair one. This is a, a brushless three-phase DC motor. And I know that sounds like a mouthful, but what it is, is it's uh, a servo motor used in a lot of automation applications. So the basic components of this motor is you have the rotor, or the shaft, some people call it the shaft, we have the main body or the winding section here, and then in the back, we have an encoder or feedback device. Now, you'll also notice that there's two connectors up on top. You have a power connector and you have a feedback connector. Your power connector feeds power from the drive down through the windings to power the rotor. The feedback connector powers, sends power to the encoder, and out of the encoder, it sends a signal back to the drive to tell it the position of the rotor. Now that's what makes a servo motor a servo motor, is the feedback that's given from the rotor back to the drive to tell it the position of the rotor. Normal, draw, normal motors like AC, DC, and some stepper motors do not have feedback devices on them. So if you have an application like a pump, a conveyor belt, or something like that, um, where you don't need to know the, the accuracy or the position of the shaft, then you don't need a feedback device. In the case of a three-phase brushless DC motor, you have to have a feedback device, not only to tell the drive where you are in a position on your machine, but you also have to know where it is in, inside one rotation. So on a normal motor, like let's just say a DC motor, that has brushes and a commutator, this has no brushes or commutator on the inside. It's brushless. So what that means is that the encoder has to tell the drive where it is so that it knows when to fire the windings. So if you think about it in another way, how like an internal combustion engine works, how you have a piston coming up to top dead center, when it does, the spark plug fires and it you know, burns the fuel and the engine rotates around. Here, you have to know where it is, so that way the drive knows when to fire the coils in order to commutate the motor and turn it around in a 360 degree rotation. Okay, earlier you mentioned encoders. What kind of encoders are there? Okay, there so there's two main style of encoders. One's an absolute encoder and one's an incremental encoder. And inside absolute encoder, there's two different categories. There's a traditional style that has a zero to five, five volt feedback. And there's also a serial, which is more common today. So the two main common types of encoders is a serial uh, absolute encoder and an incremental style encoder. Now a serial encoder communicates digitally back to the drive. It doesn't send zero to five volt pulses like an incremental encoder does. It communicates via uh, RS-232 or uh, CAN bus or device net or whatever the case may be. There's also a few other types of feedback devices. One's called a resolver. And a resolver is a, um, a transformer based feedback device. Um, they're very robust. Uh, they're, they're almost uh, foolproof in effect, where they're very difficult to, to kill. Uh, we, we find when we repair servo motors that resolvers are very rarely bad. Um, they, they don't have bearings in them like traditional encoders do. Uh, that's what we find most common uh, is wrong with encoders is that the bearings fail in the encoder. Um, some of the other uh, problems that we find is that the encoders, they actually have a glass disc on the inside that a sensor picks up on the position of that glass disc and it feeds it back out. Um, so if you actually have a, a, a real rough shock on the side of the motor, let's just say somebody comes in and drops a piece of metal on it or is, hits it with a hammer during installation, that shock can transmit through and, and crack that glass disc. And we have the ability to repair and replace those? Absolutely, yeah. So we can repair the electronics in the encoders. Um, a lot of the times we'll replace them either with a, an original OEM or an aftermarket alternative, uh, depending on the situation. But absolutely, we do uh, repair and replace depending on what's best for the situation. That's excellent. Yeah, thank you. As servo motors are used in different industrial applications, what are some of the failure modes we're going to see in these? Well, I think the number one failure that we see is bearing failure. 
We typically see front bearing failure in these servo motors, and that's because you might have this on a belted application with a pulley in the front. The belt might be really tight, putting a big strain on this front bearing. Typically what you'll find is the front bearing is larger than the back bearing is. But we'll find both sides bad from time to time, but typically the front bearing is going to be your main failure point. And that's typically because that's where the load is going to be placed when it's in its application. Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, other than that, uh, feedback devices are the second most common failures, so resolvers, encoders. Uh, tachometers, hall sensors, things of that nature. It, there are electronics in there, so they're prone to failure as well. And then third on that list would be uh, either winding failure or uh, a mechanical failure. Um, winding failures aren't as common as they were in days past when you had a, a large AC motor that would uh, run until the windings just burned up in them. Uh, today's technology with the drives, uh, if there's an overload situation, the drive recognizes that and shuts the motor down. Um, and then we come up with a, a mechanical failure where your pulley starts to slip on the shaft, you have a bearing seize in the front end, um, you know, you might have a, a, a taper on the front of the motor sh uh, shaft uh, from, from wear, um, all kinds of mechanical issues, the ear breaks off, we have the capability to repair all that. Uh, whether we're going to put a new shaft in the motor, we're going to repair the end bell, we've made end bells in the past. Um, there's, there's not much to these motors that we can't do to save you time and money back in the factory. Um, a lot of these motors, they, uh, they have a long lead time when you order them from the manufacturer, brand new, if they're still available. If they're not available, then you'll come into situations where you have to replace the drive and perhaps the motion controller or PLC, and you can get into a big retrofit just because your motor died. So now that we've gone over some of the things we can do, can we go over some of the actual steps that are performed on these to rebuild them? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to go and show you what we did to this servo motor. Um, we're gonna, this particular servo motor had a front bearing failure, and the run out of the shaft, you'll see, is about a hundred thousandths. So this motor shaft was moving up and down in this direction almost a hundred thousandths of an inch, which is a pretty, pretty good amount. Um, so we're going to take you through the whole process, disassembly, replacement of bearings, machining of the front end bell, strip down of the motor, sandblasting, and then we'll paint it up, reassemble it, and we'll test it. Let's go check it out.